Compact Advanced Students Book by Peter May, published by Cambridge University Press and Cambridge English Language Assessment, 2014. This recording is copyright. CD two. Unit seven, listening part one, exam task. You'll hear three different extracts. For questions one to six, choose the answer A, B, or C which fits best according to what you hear. There are two questions for each extract. Extract one. You overhear two colleagues talking about the man's recent holiday. Now look at questions one and two. Higher up on the main slopes, there was far less than in previous years. In fact, there were huge bare patches on some of them. It must have put a lot of other people off too. The whole resort area is usually quite crowded, but this time there was hardly a soul in sight, even though all the hotel prices were heavily discounted. So all in all, it was something of a wasted trip, really. Well, I think I'd have counted myself lucky just to be somewhere that beautiful at this time of year. But if what you saw there is part of a more general pattern, and it does seem the same thing's been happening in mountainous areas in other parts of the world, then it looks as though we're seeing the physical results of climate change sooner than we expected, even just a few years ago. Or maybe it's just a temporary thing, as some people claim. Periods of warm and cold weather go in cycles, don't they? To some extent, certainly, but I think we're looking at a longer-term trend now. Higher up on the main slopes, there was far less than in previous years. In fact, there were huge bare patches on some of them. It must have put a lot of other people off too. The whole resort area is usually quite crowded, but this time there was hardly a soul in sight, even though all the hotel prices were heavily discounted. So all in all, it was something of a wasted trip, really. Well, I think I'd have counted myself lucky just to be somewhere that beautiful at this time of year. But if what you saw there is part of a more general pattern, and it does seem the same thing's been happening in mountainous areas in other parts of the world, then it looks as though we're seeing the physical results of climate change sooner than we expected, even just a few years ago. Or maybe it's just a temporary thing, as some people claim. Periods of warm and cold weather go in cycles, don't they? To some extent, certainly, but I think we're looking at a longer-term trend now. Extract two. You hear two friends discussing a documentary program about a tropical rainforest. Now look at questions three and four. It was over ambitious, really, wasn't it? I mean, trying to pack into forty minutes the entire evolution of the rainforests, the range of trees, plants, and animals in them, plus all the danger they're now in—it's just not possible. I don't think I could have sat through any more of that, to be honest. Especially with the narrator talking to viewers as if they were school kids. It was like being back in biology lessons. He sounded like he'd never done a voiceover before. Actually, I thought he had quite a pleasant voice, though I must admit I could have done without it. Whenever I was trying to listen to all those marvelous background sounds, the birds and monkeys and everything, I've seen better camera work too. At times, that looked more like a home video.、Mm, there were some nice shots, though, especially those taken from above the treetops. Yes, they were very much the exceptions, and they must have paid some actual professionals quite a lot to get those. Though they could have saved all that money by filming it in Cairns in northeast Australia, there's a cable car near there that runs right above the rainforest. It was over ambitious, really, wasn't it? I mean, trying to pack into forty minutes the entire evolution of the rainforests, the range of trees, plants, and animals in them, plus all the danger they're now in—it's just not possible. I don't think I could have sat through any more of that, to be honest. 
especially with the narrator talking to viewers as if they were school kids. It was like being back in biology lessons. He sounded like he'd never done a voiceover before. Actually, I thought he had quite a pleasant voice, though I must admit I could have done without it whenever I was trying to listen to all those marvellous background sounds, the birds and monkeys and everything. I've seen better camera work too. At times, that looked more like a home video. There were some nice shots, though, especially those taken from above the treetops. Yes, they were very much the exceptions, and they must have paid some actual professionals quite a lot to get those. Though they could have saved all that money by filming it in Cairns in northeast Australia. There's a cable car near there that runs right above the rainforest. Extract three. You hear part of an interview with a woman called Anne Murphy. Who is campaigning against the building of a new factory? Now look at questions five and six. Anne, can you tell us why you're so opposed to this scheme? Quite simply, it's a local beauty spot, and whoever had the idea of putting a food processing factory in those lovely green fields right next to the river simply doesn't care how much damage it would do. I know the plan includes an effective water treatment plant, but such a large development would be impossible without new roads, power lines, and so on, with all the harm that would do to the countryside. And what do the farmers say about this? Well, there's a lot of compensation on offer, and they're likely to take it. Actually, they've now said that if this scheme doesn't go ahead, they'll find another buyer for the land. So, doing nothing with it isn't an option either. Finding an alternative use for it, perhaps as a country park or something like that, sounds like the best bet. I know that some of the people on the town council have argued for going ahead with the plan on a slightly reduced scale, but that's completely out of the question as far as I'm concerned. Anne, can you tell us why you're so opposed to this scheme? Quite simply, it's a local beauty spot, and whoever had the idea of putting a food processing factory in those lovely green fields right next to the river simply doesn't care how much damage it would do. I know the plan includes an effective water treatment plant, but such a large development would be impossible without new roads, power lines, and so on, with all the harm that would do to the countryside. And what do the farmers say about this? Well, there's a lot of compensation on offer, and they're likely to take it. Actually, they've now said that if this scheme doesn't go ahead, they'll find another buyer for the land. So, doing nothing with it isn't an option either. Finding an alternative use for it, perhaps as a country park or something like that, sounds like the best bet. I know that some of the people on the town council have argued for going ahead with the plan on a slightly reduced scale. But that's completely out of the question, as far as I'm concerned.